Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dr. Monica Chabla and I'm a reproductive endocrinologist and a fertility specialist at Bucky IVF. Today I've been asked to speak about polycystic ovarian syndrome. Because it is the PCO Awareness Month, the aim is to inform, educate and to remove all the myths uh, surrounding this syndrome, not only amongst patients but also amongst health workers, physicians and gynecologists. No doubt it is a complex syndrome and uh, actually it's called the reproductive metabolic syndrome rather than just PCO because of the various other systems in the body apart from the reproductive system that it involves. It's pretty common actually and about 7 million women all over the world might be suffering from it. And this region particularly probably 1 in 5 or 1 in 7 women would suffer from it. What are the symptoms normally that they come up with? It could be delayed periods, it could be irregular periods, infrequent periods. They might have difficulty in conceiving. Uh, they might have change in body appearance due to putting on excessive weight, sometimes acne, sometimes increased hair growth on the face or other parts of the body. There could be some skin patches, dark patches with these women develop. And the other thing is that it can affect other parts of the body like the cardiovascular system, these women can become more prone to high blood pressure, heart attacks and a lot of young women may develop diabetes as a part of this syndrome. Now, uh, what is the crux of the problem? Uh, it appears out of the research that has gone into this syndrome that insulin, the hormone, appears to be the main element. Now this hormone is usually utilizing starch and carbohydrate in our body. But what happens in these women is that it doesn't work too well. There is a resistance that the body is showing to the work of this hormone and the levels go up. When the insulin levels go up, they act on the ovaries and produce more male hormone. Now male hormone is present in all females, but in these women, the levels are much higher and they lead to the disruption of ovulation. They lead to all the symptoms like acne and the hair growth that are talked about. Now why is it that some women suffer from it and others don't? And what is underlying behind this PCO? There could be some sort of a genetic element and it is seen to sometimes run in families. There is also a very very direct association with obesity and it appears to increase the situation of insulin resistance. Of almost 50 to 80 percent of women probably have a higher body mass index when they suffer from PCO. Now how do we diagnose it when the patient comes in? It's mainly based upon clinical symptoms like I just told you and that could be enough to suspect PCO. But an ultrasound is needed to find out uh, the character of the ovaries. Sometimes some hormonal blood tests are required to support the diagnosis or, or to exclude other kinds of diagnosis. Now what is the treatment? How do we manage it? Based on the advice given by your reproductive endocrinologist or the gynecologist, it will be depending on what you need at, at what point of life you're in. If whether you're married or unmarried, whether you require a conception or not, whether it just needs regularization of your period. So the treatment would definitely depend upon your talk with your, with your medical expert. Now, in case a woman wants to get pregnant, the first step would be that in case she is obese, we definitely need to watch out for her weight loss. It is not that the weight loss is going to correct all the symptoms, she's going to become immediately pregnant, but definitely it is a positive step in the right direction because it lowers the insulin resistance. The second step is then in these women to produce eggs. Now what happens is that because the eggs are not produced regularly, we need to induce this ovulation. This ovulation is induced usually by simple fertility medications such as clomiphene or letrozole which can be prescribed by your fertility doctor. Now most, most of the women say about as high as 70% women may ovulate because of these drugs so it works in them and half of them might get pregnant. Now in case these medications are not working we move on to using some injections sometimes. If a woman is responding to this medication, then it may take her about three to six cycles to get pregnant. In case this is not working, either there is some resistance or she's not getting pregnant because of other reasons, then it is better to move to IVF. Now, in the past, a lot of gynecologists, a lot of fertility physicians also felt that PCO is, is a very risky thing and uh, IVF could be very, very dangerous in these women because of the number of eggs that they produce. But the good thing is that in the past few years, 
IVF has become very, very safe in them. Because of the availability of very mild or minimal stimulation, because of the availability of certain new medications which can help them not to hyperstimulate, because of the availability of a good freezing program, IVF is extremely safe in them and with very, very high success rates. So please encourage uh, uh, women who come to gynecologists to actually go for this process if other things are not working out. And for my patients, all I want to say is that it's a highly manageable condition, but the right advice at the right time from the right person, from the right medical expert, preferably a reproductive endocrinologist is the way to go. And you'll be fine. Till next time, goodbye.